Before we get to the movie, I have a controversial statement to make. Goodfellas is a better movie than The Godfather. I will accept that opinion. Godfather's older, it's, you know, was in the canon first, so it's hard to top it. I think I prefer The Godfather to Goodfellas, but The Goodfellas is every inch a king. I think they're neck and neck in terms of casting, writing, uh, you know, editing, just the grand scope of them. Innovation, yes. Goodfellas has the edge on The Godfather because of humor. Mmm. That's where it Nose is ahead. Opinions everyone should have, but there are some things that are mathematically factual. Right. You can find a person attractive or unattractive, say Bogart or Willem Dafoe, but then you look at Ingrid Bergman, you would be wrong if you said that she wasn't attractive. <laughs> With a work of art, there is a saturation point of how good it can be. And maybe Godfather and Goodfellas are at that saturation point where there is nothing more to ask of cinema. Saying one is better than the other is a moot point. Yeah. Well, I think we've worked this out. Yeah, there we go. Problem solved. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Bergman. Godard. Antonioni. Kurosawa. Eisenstein. We've watched the work of some of the greatest foreign film directors of all time. But there is one notable exception to this list. The maestro himself, Federico Fellini. Ooh. We are going to watch one of his movies, and I'm happy to say it's one of the weird ones. Tonight, we Veni, Vidi, and Vici. Fellini Satyricon. What? I thought you saw this movie. Released in 1969, starring Martin Potter, Hiram Keller, Max Born, and Capuchin. Fellini Satyricon is based on fragments by the ancient Roman writer Petronius. There was another film called Satyricon, also released in 1969, which forced Fellini to change the title of his film to differentiate the two. And also to rub it in, I'm a name. I can use my name above the title. I'm a director. Who are you again doing the Satyricon over there? Oh, well, I'm Fellini. Vincent Canby of the New York Times wrote that Satyricon is a travelogue through an unknown galaxy magnificently realized movie of his and our wildest dreams. This film would earn Fellini his third Oscar nomination for Best Director. In the Pitchfork video series Over Under, Jeff Goldblum recounts a time in the 60s when he took mescaline and went to see a double feature of this film and Yellow Submarine. <laughs> Quoth Goldblum, Oh boy, oh, I was into it. And I just found this out today. There is a cameo in this movie by fitness guru Richard Simmons. <laughs> we'll see if we can spawn it, but it might be difficult because it was back when he was fat. I have avoided this one for some reason, just because I don't know if I want the weirdness. Yeah. This film might inspire you to make some bizarre visual creations of your own. And this gift will help you do that. Oh... Some construction straws. Construct-o straws. Some interesting stuff there. They look like straws. So take a walk along the Appian Way to the old leather couch as we get weird with Fellini Satyricon. I am Wall. <laughs> Here's my cheek. <laughs> To whisper through. <laughs> In the baths of ancient Rome, Enculpius is mad at Aschiltus. His lips and his words are out of sync. You see, Enculpius is in love with a young boy named Giton, and Aschiltus has stolen him away. That stinks. Aschito! Aschito in the toilet, though. <laughs> Somebody's gonna bite their thumb at somebody. They fight with a towel. I've sold the young boy to the actor Vernacchio for 30 units of money that we use in this time. Vernacchio is in the middle of staging a weird play. He is uh, not exactly doing the classics, even though I guess everything from that time period would qualify as the classics. <laughs> He's doing more broad stuff. <laughs> There's some flatulence. <laughs> this is where we got our civilization from. <laughs> and acting. 
I'm guessing this is opening night and closing night. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be taking a 15 minute intermission. Bathrooms are out the doors and in the sewer. <laughs> and Copius interrupts the play. Give me back my lover, Guiton. You can't have him back. I paid a good price for him. People in the audience are like, I bid higher. I'll pay you, Venecchio, for that boy. Bidding for the diddlin'. Gitone, viene via con me. Stage left or stage right? I forget which way is the exit. <laughs> and what le left? Ah! And then one of the royals says, Hey, you've offended Caesar and the state of Rome. Give him back his friend, or I'll burn down your theater. Here's your little boyfriend back. Calpurnia. Calpurnia? Calpurnia? What make your big head so hard? And Colpius and Giton walk through a series of weird rooms. They're filled with nothing but depravity. I now regret not providing mescaline. <laughs> and there's just this big ziggurat, a perversion that they live in. And then he and Giton retire to his bedroom for a little private time. Sensual man love. There you go, you like that arm? Some arm action going on there. A Schiltus shows up. It looks like you've been having a nice time. Tu sei uomo di lettere, anch'io. We've read all of the fragments. <laughs> Every fragment. It's easy to be a major in literature back then. There were only like 12 books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving out. I'm taking my stuff and I'm leaving. Gitoni says, I want to be with a Schiltus. Sorry, that's it. Oh. Gesture of disappointment. Gesture of, I'm walking with you. And Colpius' grieving over his lost lover is interrupted by a massive earthquake. Later! And here we are at the gift shop. <laughs> and Colpius is in a museum. Ganymede. Narciso. Dave. And a poet is giving a lecture on art. He may be poor, but he's rich in talking. The two gentlemen go to a huge feast thrown by Trimalchio, a rich poet. All kinds of food is being eaten. Cracking again. Oh, this dinner starting so late we should be vomiting by now. They're not worth as much. And I took them out of the package, the original packaging. I cannot. The resale value of my household gods is much lower. <laughs> I do that when I go to dinner parties too. Legatelo e frustatelo. Pilot crucify him. I was thinking the same thing, but I. <laughs> I couldn't figure out the words. All kinds of dancing is happening. Y-M-C-A. Eumolpus, the poor poet, gets up and recites a poem. He's humiliated. <laughs> Tremalchius recites a poem and everybody loves it, but the other poet knows he's plagiarizing. Take our friend here down to the furnace room and throw him in. Hey, he was my ride. Don't throw him in the furnace. Tremalchio says, let's all go to my mausoleum. It's just over there. They're about to walk right past the Who on the Who's Next album cover. Look at me, I'm dead now. Bury me. And everyone sobs over him. Oh, I love being dead. I get to hear everyone's lamentations. Now that's a party. And Colpius meets up with Imolpus, the poet, in a barren wasteland. Would you call that a blasted heath? <laughs> I give you the world. Take it all. Go, enjoy the world for me. He wakes up in chains. You're a slave now, son. They're in the slave house now. <laughs> They're in the slave house now. You fell asleep on a beach, and now your freedom is out of reach. You're, You're in, in the, the slave house, house now. This boat is going to the island of Caesar. The old buddies, Ashiltis and Chitone. Yeah, everyone slaves here. His harp mumblings bring all the boys to the barge. <laughs> he is forced into gladiatorial combat. With Lycus. Lycus on Facebook. Yes. Good <laughs> for the hire. Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> Even though Lycus is fighting with him, he's kind of taking a shine to him, too. He's like, I fight you, I love you. What eyes you have. Never in any film script, except for this one, has there ever been the stage direction, and then the gladiators kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go up topside and they get married. I thought it was a fight to the death and it turned out till death to you part. <laughs> it's all making sense now that we're going over it again. <laughs> when they arrive at Caesar's Island, they are informed that Caesar has been killed and this happens to Lycus. Oh! A rich man and his wife are at home. They free all of their slaves. 
Io voglio che questo... Gli dei vi assistano nel viaggio. This movie's been normal for like three minutes. I don't trust it. The rich man slashes his wrists. He and the wife share a few words. Una volta in Africa. I bless the rains. <laughs> and the wife does herself in two. Encopius and Eschiltus are friends again, and they happen upon the suicides. Oh, corpses. But free house. They discover a young lady hiding in the slave quarters. Oh, it's a beautiful woman. Now it's time for love games. Threesome! You know, when you're pansexual, any three-way works. That's right. And everything's a three-way. If you're pansexual, it could be you, her, and the bed. <laughs> Later, Encopius and Enchiltus have joined a small caravan. There's this woman in a cart who's sick. They're going to take her to the Oracle. This hermaphrodite demigod named Hermaphrodite. Everybody's seeing the Oracle. This albino she-man. The Oracle is uh, just laying in a pool of water. The precog is sensing future crime. This is unfair. We should have the Oracle. And so they decide to kidnap the Oracle. Out in the blazing sun, the Oracle's not doing so well. In your future, I see an eye poke. <laughs> poke. <laughs> they run out of water, and the Oracle dies. This guy blames Encolpius. There's a fight to the death. Later, in another location, Crete, I assume, Encolpius now has to kill the Minotaur. If you do, you get to lay with Ariadne. Encolpius isn't qualified for this job. Encolpius throws himself on his mercy. Please, Mr. Minotaur, don't kill me. I'm not a fighter, I'm just a student. I gotta pay my student loans somehow. The Minotaur takes off his cow hat. Ah, this guy's good. I like him. I'm not gonna kill him. Okay, you can have Ariadne anyway. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ariadne. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> he tries to make love to her and she says, what are you doing? You're like a dead fish in the pants area. Encolpius is impotent. In front of a whole crowd of people. Imolpus, the poet, shows up. Now he's a rich man. Priapus is mad at you. Get in my caravan and we'll go to the Garden of Earthly Delights. Being carried on a palanquin. Definitely on my bucket list. <laughs> I'm more of a sedan chair man myself. Oh, it's delightful. Delight number one, an elephant. <laughs> this will make you always feel as though your penis isn't large enough. This is the last take. We need to clear out. Holy Mountain coming in to shoot here later on today. There's one place that you can definitely get a cure for impotence since none of this crap is working. Your ass better be on it. He has to go over to Africa and meet with Onathea, who is a sorceress. There was this wizard who fell in love with her once, F. Murray Abraham, but he was old and ugly. And so Onathea tricked him. Get in this basket and come up to my room and we'll get nasty. But she leaves him hanging in the basket. Literally leaves him hanging. You're nothing but a bastard in a basket. Bastard in a basket. So he curses the land. No more fire. Give us back fire. We need to bake our bread. I'll tell you where you can find your fire. I've cursed Onathea too. So she's hot down below. I am the god of crotch fire. And I bring you fire. <laughs> bah, bah, to bake you some bread. Bah, bah, bah. Watch out, lady, there's a fish. And Copolis and, and um, Copolis and a, a... Our two heroes, they go off to find this lady. She shows up in the guise of his mother. Designed by R. Crumb for your delights. They make love. Yeah, ancient Rome. Nothing's off limits. He is potent again. Oh, man, I am charged up. We gotta go see the world. We gotta stop being sad. But because it's a wide world and you're only young once, Achiltus drops dead. Those things are going well, and suddenly, you're dead in a field. Fiend? Nope. <laughs> Not Fiend. That's a last shot of a movie if I ever saw one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the rich poet, Imolpus, is now dead. Imolpus left a will, though. You can have all my stuff, but you gotta eat me. I got my freedom, I'm back in the bone zone, and now I get to eat a guy. <laughs> I'm going to get on this ship, and I'm going to sail wherever it takes me. Give me more fragments. I need more <laughs> fragments. Maestro, there are no more fragments. Okay, I just end the movie. Freeze frame ending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Satyricon. Fellini Satyricon. I wonder what the other Satyricon's like. <laughs> it is a very beautiful film, even in the midst of its grotesqueness. The beautiful and the grotesque are side by side, and that's kind of fascinating. Who is the author 
who said the phrase derangement of the senses? Was that Arto? I don't know, but that sounds like something Arto would say. That yeah. sounds like something that Fellini is doing yes. throughout this film. It really makes you feel like you're under the influence of something that is turning your brain inside out. Knock, knock. Who's there? Fellini Satyricon. Is Fellini Satyricon who? I don't know! <laughs> This movie doesn't have cause and effect or motivation like we are used to it. It is like you are experiencing a dream, which has dream logic and dream leaps. When I'm in a dream and something's happening and then now that's over and now I'm doing this now. And there's still the memory and the remnants of whatever happened to me earlier in the dream. This is another one of those movies that you can almost smell. Just the hedonism and the sweat and the smoke and Mm -hmm. the dank, close spaces. Yeah. I really want to be at this party, but if I was at this party, I wouldn't want to be at that party. (laughs) I generally don't like to go to parties where people demand praise. (laughs) <laughs> the most praise I'll give at a party is to sing Happy Birthday. I almost can't believe that this movie was made. Yeah. All the work that had to go into this. Those boats that they had. How do those are functional boats? Who makes a square boat? I neglected to mention at the top of the show that there was a basement alum involved with this production. The cinematographer, Giuseppe Rortuno, also did the cinematography for All That Jazz. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Well, I can't. When Terry Gilliam wrote that script, he was like, get me Rotuno. It shows the importance of a cinematographer. Oh, Fellini and his vision. Fosse and his vision. Gilliam and his vision. Well, all of their visions are tied together by the guy who's actually driving the camera. Yeah. I didn't see Richard Simmons. I did not either. I'm guessing he's hard to spot. There's just so many people. And in case you missed him, here he is. This episodic storytelling technique that leaps from place to place seems to have repercussions through the ages. Candide, where you have the one guy who's being batted around from one situation to another. And there's Tom Jones and even Slaughterhouse-Five, where these are just pieces of this very large adventure that is a life. It's a young man's youth. Yeah. He goes from place to place, he has these weird encounters, and but they're heightened because it's literature. And then even heightened more because it's turned into cinema. I really wish we knew Inculpius the man a little more. I wish we got to see more of his inner life, more nuts and bolts story stuff, just a little bit more. Something to attack things. Yeah, and then all of the circus that's happening around it, it's almost more absurd and more Mm -hmm. surreal because you have a kernel of reality walking through it. I got a birthday coming up. Yeah? And I think for my birthday, I might throw a satiricon. (laughs) There's going to be fire, breasts, leather strapping, just kind of thrashing and rolling around. These are some of the things that you'll find at my Satyricon, my birthday Satyricon. I'm looking forward to it. I am invited, right? Play your cards right. Fellini Satyricon, quite an experience, and I would definitely recommend it to you. And now it's the time for Seen It. Seen It. The Oscars have already happened, but we're still living in the past where we haven't seen them yet, and we have more Oscar movies to talk about. Winston Webb, he solves problems, and he writes, I'm going to have to say Black Panther was my favorite. Seen it. Seen it. I get down on superhero movies. Yes, you do. Black Panther was fine. I liked it. I got into it. It gave me enough to care about it while I was watching it. Yeah. And that's really all I ask. The final battle scene. You know why everyone is fighting. Yeah. And you know who a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. And so you're invested in it. It's not just nameless hordes versus the good guy. I think it falls prey to some of the pitfalls of superhero movies, bad dialogue. Um, I really like Michael B. Jordan's complicated villain. I loved Andy Serkis. Speaking of Oscar-nominated movies, let's start with the word black. Richard Ludy writes, I really like Black Klansman. Very powerful and one of the funniest Spike Lee movies, too. Seen it. Seen it. Spike Lee has done what was falsely attributed to D.W. Griffith by President Woodrow Wilson. He has truly written history in lightning. When you get to those clips at the end from present day, Mm -hmm. you think, okay, here come the Trump clips. But it, it is a gut punch and shows how vital this movie is to our world today. It seems as though with all of Spike Lee's best movies... They come out at the time when they need to come out. Yeah. It could say that he's hammering the point home too much, that he's spoon-feeding us these lessons, but it's stuff we need to hear. And all of these lessons that the movie is giving us, it works because underneath it, it's just a good cop movie. Zach Perez. I was pleasantly impressed with The Green Book. Uh, seen it. Seen... Not, oh, wait, no, I haven't seen this one. This you, is the only, the only one of the best pictures I haven't seen yet. Yeah. Green Book's getting beat up a lot. The main criticism of it is that it's sort of this 
race relations fairy tale. One of the things that I really like about this movie is they talk about the friendly racism that he encounters. When he goes down south, to these people who invited him, and they're shaking his hand, and they're smiling at him, and they're telling him how special he is. And, oh, by the way, there's the outhouse that you have to use, because you can't use the bathroom in here. Yeah. The thing I like most about the movie is not the plot, it's the performances, it's the period detail, and it does have several moments of genuine truth. I don't mean to overpraise the movie too much. It does have problems. The final scenes of the movie get a little too rosy. So, you know, it's not, not perfect by any means. Graham Condo writes... Roma had some of the best cinematography I've seen in a long time. Seen it. Seen it. I don't know how the awards shook out, but Roma is the best film of 2018. It is the Oscar night quandary. Yeah, this is technically better than everything else. But we can't vote for this one. Why not? They're not going to vote for Roma because Roma is for people who like the movie Roma. I like the movie Roma. I don't know if it was the best movie of the year. But it's not for the general public. Why? It has very long shots. It makes them feel pain in ways that movies generally don't make them feel pain. It has an ambiguous ending or just kind of a non-ending where just kind of, this is where we stop the movie right now. You're saying it's too artsy? I guess that's what it all comes down to. It. So they won't choose that one. It's very rare they choose that one. I'm not really following you. It's just something I'm, I'm putting together now. I don't care how the Academy votes. I'm saying Roma's the best movie. Yes, of that's nominated. I haven't seen Paddington 2 yet. I hear it's amazing. <laughs> okay. The screen is so large in this movie. And I watched it on my TV because it's a Netflix thing. A great director's like, look at what you want. And so there's the scene in the movie theater. Something important is happening between the couple. And then there's a movie in the background. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is the most important moment of their life. Is that, is that, is that Sir Terry? What, what, what Terry? What's that guy's name? And he's like, no, 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 wait, wait. I have to go back here. Life is that way. The most important thing in the world is happening. But we're being distracted by just the other parts of life. And the scene at the end on the beach. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they did it. They, I don't know how they did it. You can look it up on the internet. Yeah. I will look, well, I, I almost don't want to. Because yeah. I don't want to know. If you want to go someplace that's fantastical and imaginative, you can go to our website, welcome to the basement show.com. All of our episodes are there. And there are also PayPal donation buttons. You can click on those to donate to help support our show. People do this? Yes. We have a very generous donor from Iceland. And I cannot even attempt to pronounce your name, I apologize. I'll just call you Mr. D. I'm making this donation in honor of my fiance's birthday, Hrafen Helgi. He's been watching your show since 2012, and he recently introduced it to me. I think we might be your biggest Icelandic fans. It would be amazing if you could wish him a happy birthday. Takfir Alt. Uh, Hrafen, happy birthday. Takfir Alt. There are other ways you can support our show. You can click the like button on this video. You can leave a comment on this video. You can tell your friends about this video. You can like us on Facebook. To find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. What are we going to watch on our next episode? Well, I'll tell you one thing. That's going to come out very close to my birthday. Well... Oh. And we know what happens when it's my birthday time. It means that Craig gives me the gift of a movie. Let's see. I think I'd like something new, but not too new. So I think the movie you choose for me should either be from 2016 or 2017. Thank you for that challenge. I look forward to it. We had considerable buona fortuna as we watched Fellini Satyricon. We hope you did too. And now, watch this. Ma ti ripeto che quel ragazzo è mio. The boy is mine. You need to give it up. I've had about enough. It's not hard to say. The, fuck it. <laughs>